Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Reese Kitchen. Today we're making homemade fettuccine carbonara. We're making the pasta from scratch and giving ourselves a great big hug in a bowl. One of my absolute favourite dishes. It's really very simple to make homemade pasta, so let us get into it, shall we? So our ingredients today for the pasta itself, it's just plain flour, in my case gluten free, salt and eggs, a little bit of extra flour for dusting, and then for our carbonara sauce, we have butter, bacon, garlic, eggs, of which we're gonna use one egg and an egg yolk, parmesan, cream, and then salt for our salted water to boil the pasta. So it's now we can get started. You don't need any fancy equipment for this bit, just your bench. Now I'm using gluten-free plain flour. For those of you who don't require gluten-free, you can use double O for a really firm pasta or just ordinary plain flour. And I'm literally just gonna pop that in a pile on my bench. Get the salt. And I'm just gonna make a little well in the middle. Leaving some flour on the bottom for when I pop the eggs in. So it's just a little bit easier to give them a bit of a beat to start with. You could crack them straight in. And now pouring them in, I'm gonna to start to bring my flour in. So now we've got a nice thick slurry and it's not going to escape if I break the walls. I'm just going to incorporate it all in because what we want is a nice soft dough. Now pasta dough should not be sticky and it should not be crumbly. If it's sticky we need to add slightly more flour. If it's crumbly you need to flick water on. Don't pour, flick water on it until you get it to the consistency that you want. So we bring our nice soft dough together. So what I have is a beautiful, smooth, soft pasta dough. And look at the colour, that's because of those gorgeous egg yolks. Now if you're using ordinary plain flour, you need to rest this in the fridge wrapped in cling film for at least half an hour. For gluten free we don't have to do that as much but I still like to just chill it down especially on a slightly warmer day that we're having today so I'll just wrap that up and pop it in the fridge for 15 to 20 minutes gluten free at least half an hour for ordinary. So now we're up to the fun bit. So today I get to use my pasta machine. Now you can do this with a rolling pin it's just a lot more work. My pasta machine, I've had since I was 15 years old, so only a year or two, of course. Don't be cheeky. It's a manual one, so I'm gonna be cranking it through. You can, of course, buy an electric one. There is an attachment to go to my, on my um, stand mixer, but for the amount that we're doing today, it's really not necessary, and it's part of the fun. And I just love this machine. Remembering when you're caring for your machine that you never put your pasta machine in water. If any pasta sticks to it a little bit, that's why I've got the extra flour for dusting through our machine. If any pasta sticks, just use a brush to clean it through. And at the end of the, when we're finished, we just brush it all down uh, ready for next time. Because uh, you don't want any parts of this to rust, especially with our cutters. And so I have my cutter attached here that has a linguine and a fettuccine sizes on it. And we're going to be using the fettuccine today, so it just depends which way you have it positioned. There is on the side here a knob that changes the position of the roller. Different brands have it in different ways. Number one is my widest, number six is my thinnest. We don't need to roll our pasta to the absolute thinnest today. We're probably only going to about a four on here. We'll just see how it's rolling and how smooth it's coming through. Uh, but we always start on the wide. You'll notice I have my pasta machine attached to a board. That's because I don't have a big enough overhang on my bench to, to lock it in and I need it locked in nice and tight. But I also have on my board, uh, on my bench top, uh, just a non-slip mat which is important to then pop the board on so that it doesn't move because you are going to be using a fair bit of muscle today to move this across. So I'll just bring my board towards me so that it's in the right spot and you can see that as I'm turning that board ain't moving. It's, it's nice and secure. 
So I've got my pasta out of the fridge, my dough, my extra flour. I've also got a tea towel. So when we've got our sheets ready before we cut, we're just going to pop them in the tea towel to help stop them drying, um, drying out. So I think we're ready to start. So with just a sprinkle on my rollers of flour, just to get them through, we're all good to go. So cut your dough into quarters. And just squeezing it out. Okay, so just on the top of the roller and bring it through. Okay, as you can see, it's all a bit wonky looking and a bit broke off, that's all right. I'm gonna fold it in half. You always put the fold end back in first because what we want to make sure is that if there's any air caught, it pops up the top, otherwise it'll pop and you'll get a hole in your pasta sheet. So again, it's just a little bit sticky. I'll just sprinkle a little bit of flour on it. And we'll roll it through again. You always do each size at least twice. I'm gonna, I always do the first one three times. Just to get it nice and even. So in half, feed it through. That's looking pretty good. So in half again. Move my rollers just to the next notch, making sure that we're not going to stick. And again in half. You can see it's getting slightly wider, but not too bad. how silky that's looking already. So, into number just so lovely. I'm only going to do one more. So on four on my machine. And the last roll for this piece. You can see that that's stuck, so I'm going to do it again. I might just bring it back to three. Because it's stick, it's tearing. And that just depends on your, the humidity in the day makes such a difference. So I'm gonna bring it back to just that little bit thicker to stop it from tearing. Is my shape beautiful and silky, just lovely. So, onto my tea towel just to hold it, and we keep going with the rest. So 
So now we're up to cutting our fettuccine. You'll see I have a pasta tree here, which just um, links together and spins around, um, which allows me to hang um, our fettuccine as we cut it. It also comes with a wand, but you'll see me using those. But of course, if you don't have a pasta tree, it's not the end of the world. A broomstick covered in tin foil, hung between two chairs, works just as well to be able to hang your pasta while we're doing. If you cut them and just pop them on the bench, they can clump together a little bit. So we wanna just give them that chance to, to separate and dry off that little bit before we cook them. So for me, it just means I change handles and I've now got my cutter ready to go. So with our beautiful sheets. And we start to get, I'm gonna hang it back so I can see what I'm doing. We start to get that going. Slide her on and now just roll my wand off and now we're sitting there. So the important thing to remember when we're cooking uh, homemade pasta is that fresh pasta only will take two or three minutes to cook as opposed to packet fettuccine which would take eight to ten minutes to cook. So we need to have our sauce ready before we put our pasta in. Now I've just got some water boiling here and I'm going to add the salt. Salty like the sea. So a good half to three quarters of a teaspoon per litre into your pot. We want that flavour to come through into our pasta and season our dish. All right so I'm just going to Turn the heat on here on my fry pan. Now you want a large fry pan because we're going to end up putting everything together into this pan and tossing it together. So as I heat that up and I'm just going to melt the butter. And as that butter melts, I'm just going to pop in our garlic clove because I want to flavour the butter. I'm just going to cook that for a minute or two. So the garlic is flow with the butter. So we'll just take that out. And I'm going to throw my bacon in. See that sizzle. So now my bacon's got a bit of colour and a bit crispy. I'm just going to turn that heat off and keep the residual heat for a moment. And now it's time to add our pasta into the pot. So remembering that our pasta pot needs to be nice and deep and we need to have a rolling boil, which is what we've got going on here. A beautiful big rolling boil. I take the lid off and as I add the pasta, I'm going to be stirring it because I don't want them to stick. We've done all of that hard work in keeping them nice and separate. And now when that comes to the boil again, it's going to be about two or three minutes for our pasta to be ready. So a quick test of our pasta. Oops, let's try and steal a bit. Oh, that is gorgeous. Silky. Feels very cheeky, tasting before the end. Okay, that is soft and beautiful after only two minutes. So now we need to strain our um, pasta. Let's take the lid off. So, with a very slow gas on, I'm just going to toss our pasta directly in. Toss it around with our bacon. So now, our one egg and an egg yolk, quick beating in to mix with our cream and our parmesan. We're going to add all of this in together and then toss through. And the heat in the pan will cook 
that egg. Turn the heat off. Time to call the family and pop this out on plates. For all the details of today's recipe, as always, the details are on my blog at the link below. But the best bit is the eating. So, a little bit of cracked pepper. Mm, the ribbons of pasta are just so silky. And then the creaminess of the egg and the cream, and then this tang of the parmesan. This is just an amazing dish. Until next time, everybody. Ciao.